The pounding surf of the infamous Bonsai Pipeline has once again beckoned the world's best to challenge their skills in the biggest and baddest the North Shore of Oahu has to offer. Until last year, the sport of bodyboarding was dominated by Hawaiians. Then from down under came Michael Eppleston to change that forever. Now the slate is clean and competitors from 19 different countries are here vying for world championship honors, including the man who has had that title eight times, Mike Stewart. Yeah, this is a pretty classic pipe. It's got a building swell. Uh, it's just starting to come up now. It's going to get really big later. It's going to be really thick and powerful for the next couple hours. It makes for some pretty good uh, competition. Everybody and welcome to the Bonsai Pipeline for this, the 1994 Mori Boogie World Bodyboarding Championship. I'm Todd Harris. Joining me is professional bodyboarder Jay Real. And Jay, we come to the Bonsai Pipeline. We expect big surf, but have you ever seen it this big? Well, Todd, I was out there earlier today in a heat, and I would have to best describe it as a deadly gauntlet out there for the inexperienced. Fortunately, all of our competitors here today are very experienced. And the waves, they're going to need that experience to handle these conditions. 10 to 12 foot, occasional 15 foot sets coming in. Mostly out of the west, but occasionally out of the north, and those are the deadly ones. You want to stay out of the way of those, pick up the west ones, and we do have light wind conditions making for very glassy waves here, so some radical action in these type of waves. With big surf like this at the Mori Boogie, we always have some perennial favorites, as well as some dark horses in this competition. Jay, who do we look for this year? Uh, this year's no exception. We do have those perennial favorites. Of course, Mike Stewart, eight-time world champion. He lost the title last year. He's very hungry, and he's at home in these big conditions, as is Kainoa McGee, who's also alive. Mike Eppleston, last year's champion. He's someone to look out for. And two underground guys, Paul Tarpley here from Hawaii, and from Tahiti, Matt Walbro. And let's not forget Guilherme Tamega from Brazil. We've seen him knock at the door the past few years, so could be his year. 19 countries are represented here today, and we have some of the best bodyboarders in the world competing at the Bonsai Pipeline. First quarter action brought together Douglas Cockwell, Fabio Aquino, Matt Walbro, and eight-time world champion Mike Stewart, who is the dominant force in most any competition. It was Matt Walbro from Papaete, Tahiti, who gave Mike the Heat's toughest opposition. He took from Mike what was to be the biggest tube ride of his whole career. He was pushing me, pushing me, and finally I just took off, and I thought I was going to eat it because this white water came right on me, and I went right under it, and I just made it out. That was my meanest barrel ever. This incredible wave gave Matt a high score of 18.5, tying as the Heat's highest scoring wave. The tie was with local Mike Stewart, whose experience with the North Shore's pounding surf gave him the big wave advantage, placing first and reserving his spot in semi one. All eyes were on this man, the 1993 defending world champion Mike Eppleston. In quarterfinal number two, he was joined by Paul Tarpley, Seamus Mercado, and Rodolfo Fiuza. Eppleston's confessed lack of big wave experience brought on a new challenge as he set out to defend his title. With the waves three times the size of last year's competition, Mike felt it would simply be a matter of luck and wave selection to score big in these tough conditions. Very hard to find maneuvers out there when you're, when you're free falling down the face of a wave. But um, I, I was happy with just taking the drops and handling them and not getting munched. So, uh, you know, it's very hard, you know, when you come up against like Mike out here, you know, he sets it so well and makes it look so easy, but it's really not that easy out there. Another standout in quarterfinal number two action was Hawaiian Paul Tony Boy Tarpley out of Wahiwa, Hawaii. Tarpley's wave selection and performance was second only to Eppleston, with both advancing their way one step closer to the final. Quarterfinal number three included Brian Wise, Gonzalo Faria, Paulo Estevez, and Ben Severson, shown here with one of his highest scoring waves. Ben has had a tough season so far, and this heat was no exception as he placed last. No stranger to Mori contest, 20-year-old Gonzalo Faria placed first in the 1991 contest held in San Sebastian, Spain. Today he placed second in quarter number three, advancing to the finals. Advancing in first place was 19-year-old Brian Wise. Brian Wise is a familiar face on the Bud Surf Tour and is known for his maneuvering in the smaller wave conditions. On the tour last year, he ranked second overall. 
Yeah, I might be good in small waves, but you know, I'm trying on big waves, and I think I like big waves just as much as small. Think you have a shot at winning this? Oh, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> the last quarterfinal included top competitors Guilherme Tamega, Kano McGee, Sean Waddell, and Jackie Booter. Competing in his fourth World Championship event, many place the odds of winning this year's event with Guilherme Tamega. In his three years of competition, Guilherme has finished fourth, third, and second place with the win always eluding him. With his eyes set on the title, his performance in quarterfinal number four brought him one step closer to the final. While some others braved the conditions and relied on luck, Hawaiian Kainoa McGee used his local pipeline knowledge very much to his advantage, positioning himself perfectly for the Heat's highest scoring sets. It gets, gives me a better chance to win the event because it's bigger. I prefer bigger surf and I feel that my performance in bigger surf is a lot, you know, is a lot more solid being that I'm a bigger guy with a lot more experience at pipe. So it's semi-final number two, it's Wise, Faria, McGee, and Tamiga. With the conditions just as rough, the crowd looked on as the semis got underway. In semi-final number one, the crowd witnessed two huge upsets. Defending world champion Mike Eppleston continued his defense, facing once again the biggest waves of his pro career. But in the end, Mike was unable to pull off wave scores worthy of advancement into the finals. It was hard out there because it's some of the biggest waves I've ever caught in my life, so... I'm proud, you know, seventh, seventh, equal to seventh, seventh is not too bad, you know, especially in that size. And that's what I was telling everyone at home, you know, if I could make it into the semi-finals, I'd be really happy and I am really happy to make that. The surprise of the semis came when eight-time Maury world champion Mike Stewart lost his bid to retake his former title. Definitely at home in the huge pipeline conditions, Mike was simply outscored by at least six points. Mike ended his performance today in third place. The underdog of semi number one had to be Paul Tarpley, who pulled off one of the finest heats of his career, sailing past Eppleston and Stewart. Tarpley placed second, marking his place in the finals. The big win of the heat was captured by Tahitian Matt Walbro. Considering Pipe one of his favorite breaks, Walbro outscored Tarpley by a mere half point, placing him in front position and into the finals. I've been feeling confident for the whole competition. And I think it's just in your mind, you just got to believe that you can't make it. Nothing can go in your way. And then it just happens. And I've been praying the Lord too. So into the finals go Matt Walbro and Paul Tarpley. And we'll take a look back at semi-final number two. We're now set for semi-final number two, but Jay, semi-final number one, history in the making. Well, it was a milestone in bodyboarding. Eight-time world champ Mike Stewart loses out before the final, the first time in the 12-year history of the event. This is big stuff, Todd. Already waiting in the final, Matt Walbro and Paul Tarpley. And the top two finishers in semi-final number two would move on into the final to face them. In the past seven years, bodyboarders have really earned the respect of surfers at Pipe. Among these bodyboarders is Kainoa McGee. In semi-final number two, Kainoa sat the deepest and waited for the Big West Peaks. Kainoa took off on one of the biggest waves of the event. McGee would advance to the final, second to Guilherme Tamaga. Guilherme Tamaga of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, who spends the winter months on the north shore of Oahu, is another bodyboarder who has the respect of surfers who ride pipe. Big moves on the big waves were the order of the day where Tamaga was concerned, consistently taking off late, dropping in deep. It was Guilherme Tamaga who placed first in semi number two. I saw the wave and when I told you, I think it's better to make maneuver than to catch a, a barrel. And I tried and I made it. I'm, I'm still. Finishing in second behind Tamago was Kainoa McGee. It was heavy out there. We waited 15 minutes before a set even came in. Those sets that came in weren't even uh, West Peaks. They were all North Peaks throughout the whole heat. Bill Ermey and I were, were sitting at the West Peak waiting for those sets that were coming in from the heat before. And there was nothing, man. It was grim out there. So the finals are now set. We started with more than 80 competitors. We have now chiseled it down to four very experienced riders. Not quite the makeup we might have thought before the competition started, but still some great riders nonetheless. Todd, you mentioned earlier the underdogs and the perennial favorites. We have a little bit of both in this final here. The perennial favorites, of course, Kainoa McGee. He's come on strong here in this event, rose to the occasion of the big waves, and he's a big favorite here today. Also, Guilherme Tomega, a lot of people are expecting him to do well. He is probably the odds-on favorite to take the victory here today. 
And the underdogs we mentioned, Matt Walbro from Tahiti. This is his first time in the final of this event, and he's making a strong showing here today. And also in the final is 24-year-old Paul Tarpley from right here on Oahu, a bit of an underground rider over the past few years, as we mentioned earlier, but he's got the fans behind him on the beach here today. That's right, Jay. The crowd has lined the beach here, and they are going to get quite a show. Now, something to note here before the final start. Kainoa, Guilherme, and Paul Tarpley are used to this huge surf, but Matt Walbro is used to the smaller surf of Tahiti. Over here, it's more, more scary. Like, it's more what waves look more than like mountains than anything else. You can't really tell if the wave's going to open face or close out. Just got to go for it and hope for the best. The chances are much better for each one of these guys, even with the large surf, because of one thing. No Mike Stewart. The eight-time world champion out in the semis just had some bad luck. According to Kainoa McGee, though, Mike is still the world's best. He got into some bad luck. The guys in his heat got, you know, got some better waves than him. He was in the wrong place, you know. I mean, he's by far the best competitor and bodyboarder I feel um, that's ever been. And I feel that he's the only world champion that bodyboarding has ever had because he's proven himself worldwide. Um, I don't think one contest uh, should um, crown the world champion, but if it does and I'm that guy, then that's fine with me. Well, Tahitian Matt Walbro experiencing a bit of bad luck. A giant set came through and steamrolled him all the way into the beach before he even made it outside. So a late start for the Tahitian here. Already taking his lumps, and our first rider will be Kainoa McGee. McGee taking off on a mammoth outside wave, drops to the bottom, a lot of bumps in this wave. It's probably about the second or third wave in the set. He's looking for the barrel, the thing's just blasting his feet, trying to find that open face, find a tube section, whips a reverse spin, comes around here, whoa, launches a giant air and gets nailed in that piston of white water. And look at this wave, Todd. And Paul Tarpley from Wahoo, Hawaii is trying to match what he saw Kainoa just do. And Tarpley pulling a spin in a very critical part of the wave. Dangerous maneuver. Huge barrel. He pulls in, goes for it. Axed. Totally axed. Can't come out of that one. And in rapid fire succession, we've got the Brazilian up on his first wave. Tamaga bottom turning, looking for the lip. Hits the lip. That's incredible. Gets decimated by backwash. Oh my gosh, this young Brazilian taking some beatings here today, Todd. So all four of our finalists tasting a little bit of the coral reef at the bottom as they make their way back out. Jay, you got to wonder if they want to go back out because those waves are monsters. Well, these guys are taking some beatings here today. McGee launching that air earlier got worked on the landing, but a 14.0 wave score. Tarpley spins in the pocket, 16.0 on that huge wave, and Tamaga this man is starving for victory this year. Yeah, all my contests, all my Maribu contests, until now I, I got the finals, and last year I got second, I almost win, and this year I will try hard to, to win, because I really want to win. So after a great ride, Guilherme Tamiga paddles back out. We haven't seen Matt Walbro, but you said at the top of the show, he was the only one that really didn't have experience in here. And here is a real big experience rider, Kainoa McGee. McGee, definitely a favorite here today. A uh, couple of runner-up slots in this event before he wants it bad. He pulls into the barrel, a clean looking barrel, getting a little white watery on the inside, kicks out quickly, a rather small wave. And now finally, first wave for Walbro from Tahiti and a huge bowling section here. He's getting around, kicks out wisely, a giant closeout section there. When we come back, more of the finals of the Mori Bodyboard World Championship from the Pipeline. Welcome back to the beautiful but dangerous Bonsai Pipeline on the North Shore of Oahu for the 1994 Mori Bodyboard World Championships. Todd Harris along with Jay Reel, and we are into the finals, Jay. Some incredible conditions. And it has been getting bigger throughout the day, so these guys, as tired as they are, have to deal with even bigger surf here in the final. Taking off late on this one, Paul Tarpley bouncing his way trying to get around this whitewash, and he's gonna find a little bit of open face here. It's his third ride so far in the final. Tarpley chucks a cut back into a forward spin and quickly out of that one, not offering the high scoring potential. The waves are big and very spectacular as Matt Walbro makes his way back out, but not a lot of open face do maneuvers. They are just trying to survive out there. You have to be really picky, and Tamaga has managed to be picky enough to find some good ones. His second wave here, ooh, hits a bit of bump, almost comes unstuck, but he's staying with it here, and this thing is ledging up. Huge outer reef pipeline surf. Meanwhile, in the background, McGee's just starting to take off. 
Tamaga kicks out. McGee now on a monstrous wave from almost from third reef pipeline. It's a miracle the judges can even see these guys. This is his third ride. He's bouncing his way through the inside section here. And McGee looking for something here, an air launch section, a two perhaps. It's now starting to hit the first reef of pipeline, Todd. And this thing has got to do something soon here. A nice reverse spin for McGee, but a really frothy wave. And McGee pulls in and gives the salute. Kaino McGee sacrificing for some points, and the conditions have got very critical, and the winds must have shifted because they aren't getting that glassy face anymore. Well, I think it's mainly a, a product of the fact that giant sets are coming in here, creating some bump. McGee, 15.0, nice reverse there, but he rode it from all the way, way outside, second reef pipeline, came to the inside, the big salute. Nothing more I can do. How you doing, folks? And Tony Boy is third wave scoring 11.0. He's looking for some divine intervention. I hope God's with me, and I hope I get the right waves, and if I get that long barrel again, like how I got in the semis, that would probably do it. <laughs> I think all these riders, Jay, are going to need a little divine intervention to survive the conditions out here. They are behemoth. Good description, Todd. This is the biggest it's ever been for this event. Tamaga now taking off on a beast of a wave, pulling into the guts of the beast, vomiting out of that wave. Incredible ride. And Louie hits the left giant Rolo. Can he come out of that? Tamaga holding on for dear life. And well, he didn't make it, but he pops up. He's, it looks like he's having some equipment problems there as he gets bashed by the white water. Maybe a fin blown off. Take another look at that one, Todd. Third wave score, 19.5, a very high score. You can see him, he pulls into the guts of this beast, just gets ejected from that wave by all that spit and pressure, incredible waves. And the fans enjoy it, the judges enjoy it, giving him a 19.5. Tamaga heads back out after a terrific performance. This may be his year, Jay. Well, he's wanted it for a long time. Still enough energy to salute the camera there. And now taking off Matt Walbro, his second wave. Whoa, he pulls into a pocket, goes for the spin in the pocket, drops back down to this inside section, goes for the through the lip El Rolo. Can he pop out? Oh, he's bouncing around, hanging onto his board, but can't come out. So it's Paul Tarpley up next, looking for that divine intervention and the nicest wave of the day as well. And a very shouldery wave here, really nothing to work with here. Kind of a, a small wave, really, compared to what we've seen, but he's taking it all the way to the inside, trying to get as many maneuvers as he can, building up that wave quota. It's kind of hard to get some good waves out here in this final, as big as it is. And Tarpley launches air on the inside, but gets dusted off. So Paul Tarpley makes the most of a small wave as Kaino McGee heads back out after a salute to the crowd and a solid pounding, courtesy of the Pacific Ocean as our judges look on. Jay, very tight competition right now, but Tomega with that one right has got to be in the lead. Todd, apparently the judges concur with your prediction. Guilherme Tamaga, 45 points in the lead. Kainoa McGee behind by five points. The heat is winding down, and McGee needs something big, but it's going to be tough because Tamaga is on yet another good wave here. He drives down to the inside, drives for the lip, and blasts a big rollo. Boy, this guy's going to need a chiropractor. Guilherme Tamaga from Brazil continues to pad his lead. Now, this is going to be a big wave for Kanoa McGee. He's got to pull off something big. This is key for McGee. He needs something on the inside here. He goes for the big lip maneuver, hits the lip. Can he pop out? It doesn't appear so. And boy, that's going to leave the door wide open for Tamaga as the heat draws to a close. Guilherme riding very inspired. You know, he was riding a lot for his countrymen, but he was also riding for a very close friend. Yeah, of course. If I if I win, I'm gonna give this trophy, this this place for all the Brazilians, and special for Alex, who see us from from up there. <laughs> Alex Depontes tragically died earlier this year, and we, along with Mori Bodyboards, would like to dedicate this event to his memory. We've just witnessed a very exciting and very international Mori Boogie final. We've seen a lot of upsets today, and with our new world champion is Jay Real. Jay? Thanks, Todd. Well, for many years, the Hawaiians dominated this event here at the Pipeline, but this year, it's the young Brazilian, Guilherme Tamaga. Now, Guilherme, he took a second place here last year. A lot of people thought, if it gets big this year, Mike Stewart's going to have his hands full with young Guilherme Tamaga, and you did it here today. How do you feel? Yeah, when I, when I beat Mike, my first time I got second, Michael Epson won. And you see, everybody see, I, I try hard to win this event, and 
when I came in 94, I, I said, man, these years have to be my year, and, and I, I, I want it, I got it. I, I love this wave pipeline, I love, I love. <laughs> well, it's pretty obvious in your riding. This could be a man who could hold on to this crown for many years to come. Young Guilherme Tamaga from Brazil. Congratulations, 1994 World Bodyboarding Champion. Great job. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Jay, and congratulations to our new world champion, Guillermo Tamiga, a true class act. We also want to congratulate all our other competitors who competed this year at the Bonsai Pipeline, and congratulations to Mori Boogie. This was the 12th running of the Mori Boogie World Championship, and it will definitely be one to remember. So for Jay Real, I'm Todd Harris. So long from the North Shore of Oahu.